I'm Darren Karp, and with me right now from Batch Nation and the host of Bachelor's newest podcast, Talking It Out with Mike and Brian. I've got Dr. Abs in the house, Brian Abasolo. How you doing, Brian? Good, good. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, appreciate you. Thanks for being here. You know, we had Mike here last week, and he told us all about the new podcast. I've never seen him more hyped. He was in a robe. He was <laughs> very true to form. Now that the first episode is out, how are you feeling about the new venture? I'm feeling absolutely great. I think it's gonna. I think it's taking me out of my comfort zone. It's taking Mike out of our comfort zone. We want to take our viewers out of our comfort zone, but I think people are going to learn a lot. We're not just going to be talking Bachelor. We're going to be talking about all kinds of uh, situations in life, love, relationships, family, and pretty much everything in between. So we're really excited about it. Yeah, you're covering it all. You know, you both bring a different perspective to Bachelor Nation viewers. You being Colombian, Mike being black. How do you think that will open up Bachelor Nation fans to think more broadly when watching the series? Yeah, I, I just think we're a great combo because we are both minorities in this country and we come from two totally different backgrounds, cultures and upbringings. And I think we both bring a lot of experience when it comes to love and relationships. And I'm in an interracial uh, marriage right now, obviously with Rachel, my beautiful wife. And, you know, he has, I have a lot of experience in the dating space in my past and Mike, I mean, he's, a, he's basically an intimacy coach, so I think we make a great team. Well, I was going to say, you, in addition, you are someone who actually found success and love on The Bachelor. And Mike, not necessarily, at least not yet, you know, he's, he's just too charming is what I, I think, like to I say. It's a great contrast. You know, I'm the married one, you know, I'm, I'm right. like in the stable relationship. He's a single one, so it's like we're going to be feeding off of each other. And we got to get Mike a, 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 beautiful, a beautiful wife very soon. Hopefully. <laughs> I, I don't think he'll have trouble doing that. Uh, I think it's more of him narrowing them down as opposed to not having exactly. enough people. Exactly. There's no shortage of, of women courting Mike, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that, that's just my opinion. Well, I can't have you here, though, Brian, and not discuss The Bachelor because last night was the second episode of Matt James's season. And I have to know, what are your thoughts on him as a Bachelor so far? Because he's not coming from any other franchise. He's brand new to the game, essentially. Yeah, no, I think he's absolutely great. I'm really excited for Matt. Obviously, he is making history as the first Black Bachelor, which obviously is well overdue. And I'm really interested to see, you know, the diversity dynamic play out on his journey. And, you know, there's a, a, a plethora of mixed women and whatnot on the show. So I'm really happy to see that. And I really wish him nothing but the best. And I think he's doing a great job so far. Do you think that the conversation of race will be something that he has to have with the women going forward? I mean, he's the product of an interracial marriage. Is that something that absolutely needs to be discussed? Yeah, I think it comes with the territory. I mean, you know, I, I think it's, it's something that's there, so it's gonna be talked about, um, but I think he's doing a great job so far. Um, I know he had a, a couple conversations already about his mixed background, and you know, we, we definitely wanna get to know Matt on a more personal level, and I think that just comes with the territory. The fact that the fact that he, he he is biracial. We got a glimpse of that last night. You know, that was the first set of dates that we kind of started to see, which saw the first one on one with Bree, who was also the first to get a rose. Now they did some off roading, got in a hot tub, which looked really, really sweet, and had dinner in true Bachelor Nation form. Ended with kissing under fireworks, of course, because that's how everyone does it in real life. <laughs> Every night, you and Rachel, I see it now. What do you think of Matt's connection with Bree? I think it's great. I mean, obviously they have, it was the first one-on-one, -on -one. they have similar upbringings in that they grew up without their father being a part of their lives. So right. I think this show is all about connections. You know, I know Matt was very nervous coming in. You could see it by the way he was acting on day one, on night one. And of course, all the women are very nervous as well. It's a, it's a very unfamiliar situation being in that world. So I think that having that connection of having similar upbringings, I think it made them both more comfortable. So I think Bree is definitely a front runner. I have to ask, watching The Bachelor now or maybe, you know, any of the iterations, does it give you flashbacks to meeting Rachel and maybe the nerves and the buildup of doing that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I remember getting out of the limo and I legit blacked out <laughs> before I actually moved forward to go up and talk to her. And then everything came back to me and... Yeah, we, ju we just had an amazing interaction on, on night one in the initial interaction. And I think that set the tone for my season. And, you know, I think Matt recognizes that in certain girls. I think he has his favorites. You could kind of tell already. 
some of these group dates as a woman frighten absolutely terrify me okay and i need what to know your thoughts you? on the group date last night about that it, it it terrifies me okay like trying on a million wedding dresses like with a bunch of other girls listen it's good for some for me it drives me wild what did you think of that like pre-wedding photo shoot in wedding dresses with matt and do you think that may be a bad omen to the ladies going forward well, it's definitely a bad omen for the women that went home. Obviously, the ones that <laughs> continued on with the date, you know, obviously that was a good thing. But right. yeah, it definitely puts a little pressure on you. I think that, you know, being put in wedding dresses, Matt being put in a tux, like it really is going to set the women apart from each other in the sense that whoever is ready, they're going to shine. And whoever is a little hesitant, maybe not sure about themselves or maybe not sure about their connection with Matt, you know, may, uh, you know, may not present themselves in the best in the best light. So I think it's, it's very important for whenever you go on the bachelor or bachelorette, you know, you have to, you have to have that a little bit of that experience and you have to be ready for what's to come. You know, you're going on to this show for a potential husband. So I think the, the, the ladies that are ready for that are going to stand out.